evening everyone i hope you all are doing well uh, today is the sixth session of our online internship program uh, jointly organized by the youth diplomacy forum and ex chinese association so today we are going to discuss about the global development initiative and global security initiative and we have with us the director of china study center comsets comsets university uh, dr tair muntaz awan so uh, he will be talking about uh, gdi and gsi today and then followed by the panelists and that will be hosted by sayed sanjeev hasan so we have to you know without further delay we have to move towards our speaker so uh, dr tair muntaz awan sahab over to you thank you very much uh, youth diplomacy forum and uh, ex chinese association pakistan of information today ke baad wo us pe maujood hain thank you very much for having me uh, uh, a very important topic definitely is given to me first of all i'll uh, briefly introduce myself uh, i hope i am audible agar kahi pe awaaz na aa rahi ho to just let me know ji so that yes, i can you are perfectly audible right thank you very much and uh, as per my information the format given was like i have to speak for uh, half an hour 20 minutes to 30 minutes and then uh, uh, i am also the host i guess so uh, are you are you taking care of those people who uh, need to be admitted or do i have to keep clicking yes sir we will do it sir we are doing it okay you are doing it so i i'm not the I'll not be playing with the theater. <clears throat> A little introduction. I am the head of China Study Center at Comsat University, Islamabad. Uh, I'm taking this. I've taken this responsibility uh, for the last about two years, and uh, uh, along with my this responsibility, I'm also the uh, faculty member. I'm the also the assistant professor at Department of Management Sciences. I did my doctorate from one of the top universities of China, Sun Yat-sen University. Guanjo. Before that, I had my degrees in uh, technology management. I had uh, journalism and mass communication degree. I did my MBA uh, from the same institution, Comsat University. I'm alumni also, and uh, by first degree, I'm a computer engineer. So it is a combination of technology and uh, management degrees. Uh, regarding my uh, personal stake and personal involvement with this center. i believe after completing my phd after completing my my degree from uh, china i thought there is something which i should uh, give back to the society which i should uh, participate in real terms uh, alhamdulillah i i feel accomplished i feel blessed that uh, i have been given this responsibility and uh, for the last about two years uh, one of the one of the organizing members of your this online internship program Uh, Mr. Shams is also here, so he is witness of these all uh, all arrangements. We have chosen some important topics. Uh, GDI and GSI is one of those on which we were the first one to organize a panel discussion of the experts, and we we did this in the start of uh, this year. Along with that, we are focusing on different issues, different important issues. um which are which are related to pakistan and china friendship and we are organizing uh time to time we are organizing different events different uh, panel discussions round table uh different kind of activities inshallah we'll be organizing one more uh, event which is uh, about the pakistan china um cultural communication and uh, i formally invite all of you and few of you are also the uh also the organizing members in fact china ex ex chinese association is also with me in this uh, initiated so uh, our purpose collectively is to see what we can contribute what we can do in this uh, aspect and uh, i feel it is a huge responsibility and uh, if one can if one can uh, manage it well it will be it will be for our benefit and for the benefit of the country also so it is a, responsibility on which we all are working and this initiative i once again repeat uh, of an online internship program uh, giving uh, uh, giving 
encourage the students to learn about both the countries and the and their friendship is very important and similar kind of initiatives need to be taken more frequently coming on to the uh, gdi and gsi these are two broad topics and uh, maybe uh, the more the time the more better the discussion will be but i'll try to summarize it in a way that everybody understands what these two initiatives are what these two uh, important initiatives are for uh, for for the benefit of the larger uh, countries uh, not only pakistan and china but in a global scenario so when we talk about these words these both of these words have global in in the start so global means that it is not only for these two countries it is for the benefit of the larger world it is the benefit of all the countries that uh, that comprise the globe uh, this global development initiative was in fact uh, it was uttered first on 21st september 2021 in the united nation general assembly general debate it was the 76th session of general uh, assembly and uh, uh, in his speech the president of uh, china xi jinping uttered this this word for the first time gave this concept for the first time so uh, talking about that debate or talking about that 76 session of the united nation general assembly uh, i would say that first uh, thing that was uh, talked uh, that that uh, they uh, that he talked about was that we must beat covid 19 and win this decisive decisive fight crucial to the future of humanity which has nothing to do with the gdi but generally i'm talking about the the points that were uttered in in that session second was in fact pointing towards the G, uh, gdi uh, the global development initiative that is we must revitalize the economy and pursue more robust greener and more balanced global development i'll come to this point later i am uh, going to cover the third point that is we must strengthen solidarity and promote mutual respect and a win win cooperation in conducting international relations the last point fourth point in that discussion was that we must improve global governance and practice true multilateralism so now what we are focusing today uh, is the global development initiative that was the second point uh, given in that speech given in that address so uh, again that point said that uh, uh revitalize the economy and pursue more robust greener and more uh, balanced global development that was the time september 2021 was the time when covid was on its peak and uh, people in china people in pakistan people all over the world they were they were having severe shocks of covid 19 so the the purpose of working together the purpose of having a a global development was very much needed and very much uh, we can say it was a, it was an initiative right on time this global development initiative was uh, again having some some sub sub points which were focused uh, uh, which i'll be i'll be explaining further uh, the first one is staying committed to development as a priority that is we need to put development high on global macro policy then we strengthen the policy coordination among major economies and ensure policy continuity consistency and sustainability so we need to foster global development partnerships that are more equal and balanced there should be an equality among the among the development initiative second point was staying committed to people centered approach that is we should safeguard and improve people's livelihoods and protect and promote human rights through development and make sure that development is for the people and by the people and that the fruits are shared among the people also it should not be for the for the for the um, top management only or for the leaders only but it it should be for the for the general community also the third point which was uh, further discussed was staying committed to benefits for all that we should care about the special needs of developing countries and we may employ such means as debt suspension and development aid to help the developing countries particularly vulnerable ones 
facing exceptional difficulties with emphasis on addressing unbalanced and inadequate development among and within the country. The next point which was covered was staying committed to innovation-driven development. We need to seize the historic opportunities created by the latest round of technological revolution and infrastructure transformation. Uh, redoable efforts to harness technological achievements to boost productivity and foster an open, fair, equitable, and non-discriminatory environment for the development of science and technology because technology was needed at that time. Next point, which was important, which was covered, was staying committed to harmony between man and nature. So again, global environmental governance, the response to the climate change and creating a community for life of man and nature was emphasized. And again, the, the carbon footprint, which many countries are uh, focusing on these days, and uh, you can say it is, it is the need of time also, uh, was, was required to be uh, more and more focused. So the next point, again, is uh, staying committed to results-oriented action. So these five points, the result or reaction, uh, result oriented action is the is the last point among this uh, GDI uh, aspect which they which they have covered, and they have measured it or they have actually synchronized it with the UN 2030 agenda for sustainable development. I'll talk a little bit about uh, the UN 2030 agenda also, and uh, let you know about the synchronization that I'm talking about. Uh, Firstly, it is important to understand that these five points that are that are in the speech or in the address of uh, President Xi Jinping in that in that uh, session was of prime importance. And we being a common people, we being a, uh, a developing nation, we have to understand that there are eight priority areas, eight important areas that were being highlighted or that were being mentioned. To, to be focused on. Number one, poverty alleviation. Number two, food security. Number three, COVID vaccination and its, its preventive measures. Number four, financing for development. Number five is climate change and green development. Number six is industrialization. Number seven is digital economy. Number eight is connectivity. So these eight areas, they again contribute to the sustainable uh, 17 sustainable development goals in the 2030 agenda also now these eight points are of prime importance because if we see from the poverty alleviation side china has already achieved its first centennial goal and they have taken people out of the urban poverty regarding food security we have seen initiatives not only of china but all of the all of the important develop, developed countries and also in the developing countries, how to, how to counter this problem. Uh, we have recently seen an initiative by the Punjab government of Pakistan also, in which they have, they have started a service similar to the emergency service that they launched a few years ago, uh, Rescue 1122 service. So they have launched another service by which you can ensure that the food provided to you is, is in an in a acceptable or better condition. So food, uh, regarding the food securities, we have also seen the initiatives taken in Pakistan as well. COVID and vaccine, so Pakistan is one of those uh, countries. Definitely we being uh, the laggards in technology, we may have not been able to uh, commercialize our vaccine much, but we developed the vaccine as well. China is among the first countries to develop the vaccine. And again, we were the beneficiaries. We were the first country to get the vaccine from that country also. So uh, initiatives are being taken on all sides. Financing for development. So there is, this is the fourth point, And we have seen the uh, initiative of Asian Infrastructure Bank. It is not only IMF. It is not only uh, other important finance, financing bodies, which are now playing the role. But we, we have also seen Asia Infrastructure Bank also. Uh, climate change and green development. So we have the Billion Tree Project also. And China again is having 
uh, very good initiative and they are improving greenery also. They have different initiatives they are taking. Industrialization, so we definitely lag a little bit uh, in, this, uh, in this point. But again, uh, our, uh, uh, our crops are, uh, are one of the main sources. We, are, we, we basically are an agricultural country. Industrialization in terms of China is, is something which we all know and which we all have witnessed over time. Uh, a very small example that we often, uh, that I often uh, give to my students also, that uh, only a small manufacturing was shifted from China to USA, the main country which is uh, manufacturing the Apple mobile phones. So they tried to manufacture the, the screw that is uh, that you people can see there are two or three screws at the bottom of uh, iPhones. So they even tried to shift this, this manufacturing to USA and the, the deficiency rate or the or the error rate increased a lot. The reason is that in China, whenever something is manufactured, the precision is up to a maximum level. So people who were checking these two small for small uh, screws that are being uh, uh, being being in a being put at the end of the, the bottom of the phone uh, to ensure the quality of the screw there were eight people in a row in china versus three people two to three people in usa so that is why the industrialization that is why the quality of the product is always higher is always better than other countries. And that is why the manufacturing is being, uh, China is being considered as a manufacturing hub. Although the price of uh, the, the labor rate is interesting, and now they have already uh, shifted their, their manufacturing, part of their manufacturing to uh, Vietnam, to Philippines and to other countries. But still all the orders, all the main manufacturing orders are being processed in China. Uh, we have seen Chang'an Roba as an example. We have seen uh, Chang'an, the automobile company, as an example. If we talk about investments or if we talk about industrialization in Pakistan, we have seen FIFA footballs being manufactured in Baga uh, by Pakistan and uh, being used by FIFA uh, in the in the uh, in the up ongoing uh, FIFA World Cup. So we are also playing our role. I'm focusing the examples of both countries because we are mainly uh, talking about Pakistan, China. That is why. Otherwise, if we start giving the example or start taking the examples from other countries, there'll be a long list. Uh, seventh is the digital economy. So we are also playing our part and China is moving toward the digital yuan. So they have, they have already seen the future. We are also working on it, and we have seen the initiative of RAS taken by State Bank of Pakistan. So this is somehow, uh, you can say, an initiative uh, which is linked with realization of this concept. The last one is the connectivity. So uh, connectivity is a, is a broad term, and again, we have a lot of uh, things which need to be covered. The uh, automobile, uh, sorry, the, the telephony services, the mobile phone services, the internet services that are, we are one of the countries, Pakistan is one of those countries which are having high density in mobile and internet usage. And people are having connectivity at large. Though some of our areas are still affected, some of the, our areas are still not uh, having proper access, but with time, these things will improve. Zong, the Chinese, uh, the, uh, the the China mobile company is working in Pakistan and is providing its services for the for the last uh, around a decade, and we have seen that they are if they are making good profits, that is why they are uh, in this uh, in this field. Now, linking this GDI, this is what President Xi Jinping has also said, and we have examples of uh, uh, this this initiative also linking or syncing with the. 17 sustainable development goals. I hope I don't have to name all of those goals, but these, these goals are again focused on uh, hunger, poverty, education, um, climate change, all of these major areas that are being covered by GDI. 
So this is again and again a way to make those 17 sustainable development goals or make that 2030 agenda of UN more reachable or more attainable in real terms. Accessing the uh, the possibilities or accessing the uh, requirements that are being let, let down by the Global Development Initiative and syncing them with the 17 sustainable development goals is the way out, is the way to understand and then to practice uh, the, these, uh, these, uh, these important terms. The reason why I have given examples of all of, all of the points that I'm covering uh, starting from the uh, poverty elevation, food security to the connectivity and digital economy points is that people often misunderstood that China is helping Pakistan and Pakistan is just putting hand on hand and doing nothing. So we also have some important, some good initiatives and we are also trying our level best. Definitely the size of the country, the resources we have, the political turbulence that we are facing for the last few few months, the economic conditions, all of these things are something, some, some important points that we cannot neglect. And we do have to understand that this is something that, uh, that is realistic in terms. And we cannot put aside all of these things and say that Pakistan is not performing, Pakistan is not doing well, Pakistan is uh, not a good country. I mean, we we have to also understand that we are <coughs> we are working in a country which is somehow uh, you can say we have a, a a way to be happy. A way to be happy. Whenever I I use this word, it means that we are living in an independent country. We are living in a society where we, where we are free to say something, where we are free to criticize. No offense, but if we are sitting in China and we want to say anything that is anti-government, when I'm saying anti-government, it does not mean abusing, it means criticizing. It means giving a giving a negative comment. It can be a very bad consequence, and you and your family have to face those consequences. But we are paying the price of that happiness. That we do have some problems, we do have some turbulences, and we it is our responsibility that we have to we have to work with those turbulences and we have to we have to counter those problems. We are countering and we are definitely. Uh, working on our betterment also. We need our future generation to be more better. So whether it is a government of party one, party two, or party three, again, these things, these initiatives will be on na in, in national interest, and we do have to take care of these uh, important aspects also. So uh, go going on further to the uh, to the to the, to the second point of uh, today's discussion, that is the GSI, Global Security Initiative. This was the second thing which in fact came in April 2022. And uh, after Global Development Initiative, this is something which is of prime importance, which is of uh, major, uh, major concern to uh, not only China, not only Pakistan, but to a bigger world, to the uh, global perspective. From the Global Development Initiative, what we just took or what we just mainly uh, take as a key takeaway is that we have to work on a, on a prosperous or on a common ground on which we all can work together, work in a better way. So similar terms on a similar issues we have seen before this April 2022, or during that time, we saw uh, Russia-Ukraine war, war also. And many countries are getting affected because of this war. Uh, even China was blamed uh, due to few reasons. Pakistan is also blamed few, on few reasons in this war. 
then again uh, uh, us is also being uh, blamed uh, on on few instances due to this war but whatever the 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 pros and cons of, of this war or the consequences and reasons of this war are not of uh, our uh, topic today not of our uh, discussion today uh, mainly that was the reason that became the emergence of this concept president xi jinping he made a keynote speech in the uh, in the bao forum of asia annual conference 2022 and on 21st april 2022 uh he he made a speech titled as rising to challenges and building a bright future through cooperation in which he gave this concept he proposed global security initiative as the first concept there were six commitments that were being made in uh, this uh, gsi uh, those six commitments were said as maintaining the common comprehensive cooperative and sustainable security so it it does not mean security of china security of pakistan and china but it said security of the region security of the globe security of the people living in different countries second point was respecting the sovereignty and territorial integrity of all countries so we should respect the boundaries we should respect we are facing we pakistan are facing a problem for since independence since 1947 about uh, kashmir we are facing the similar kind of problems uh, border issues with india so we are also one of those affected we are also one of those countries which are having problems that is why we should understand and we should propagate this concept more better china no doubt is also having some uh, problem at ladakh level with i with india some other issues uh, can also be seen we have uh, immigrant issues of afghanistan also uh, for the last many years still we are facing some problems and we are indecisive whether to uh, close this border whether to keep it open how should we deal with this border so we are we are one of those countries which are facing these territorial integrity issues also third one respecting the purposes and principles of the un charter un charter so that un charter should <coughs> i believe i'm not going into the detail of the charter but that un charter should not only be one sided or should should not only be inclined towards uh, a group of countries but also should focus on developed world developing world and under developed world equally this is what this gsi is mainly talking about the fourth point is peacefully resolving differences and disputes between countries so peaceful resolution un is also there we have also other similar bodies that are working on it we we uh, asian countries or the south asian central asian countries we also have to make a stronger block we also may have to make a stronger body that should protect our rights there are i'm i'm not saying that there are the bodies are not existing but we should work further to strengthen them or if needed we should make a better better body and that should represent all of us that should represent the peace or uh, that should uh, project the peace among these countries and definitely with other countries also the fifth point is maintaining security in traditional and non traditional domains so it is not only about the borders but it is also about the inland security it is also about security of people coming to pakistan and people going out from pakistan we should not be having such an environment in which we uh, face the closure of uh, um, of of our confucius institutes the bomb blast that happened in uh, karachi it resulted in closure of uh, confucius institutes all over pakistan and they are still uh, lacking the the chinese uh, staff and people who were studying there people who were part of those confucius institutes are still waiting for that uh, that condition to get better the last one is uh, upholding the indivisible society indivisible security so in the in this uh, last point we should hold 
that this security issue again it is linked with previous problems also previous uh, points which I have explained that there is a security issue there is a security problem among some of the countries and those countries should have their own solutions they should have their own uh, way outs and the countries that are among the neighbors the countries that are powerful or that that are called as developed countries they they have the responsibility to uh, to to counter those those problems and help those developing countries we uh, we faced a problem of uh, one of our top journalists uh, arshad sharif and he was he was assassinated in kenya so how come my journalist can be assassinated in a third country and there is no such voice till now there is no such action being being taken in in real terms why the international bodies are not speaking till now. So this is what would mainly security or mainly upholding indivisible security points towards. There are there are numberless incidents. The most oldest incident is uh, that of uh, Dr. Afia. All of us know, but we we still don't know what will be the solution or will there be any solution or not. Tomorrow, in place of Dr. Afia, it can be me or you. So how, how this uh, indiv indivisible security uh, thing works? We have to make sure that this, this global security initiative, six commitments, core six commitments uh, should be implemented, should be worked together for a better future of our next generation, not only for us, but for our better future generation. Now, the, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going towards closing the GSI thing. <coughs> so I'll, I'll now talk about five principles of peaceful coexistence. So how can we do it? How can we make this uh, world, make this globe more peaceful? These five principles uh, say that we should have mutual respect for territorial integrity and sovereignty. I, what I just explained, or what I just talked about, boundaries, the respect for boundaries is most important. Then mutual non-aggression. If there is some issue, always we, we, we learn this through different uh, books, we learn through different motivational speakers, we learn through different ways that there is a way to resolve conflict. There is a way to resolve the issues among people. Even whenever we, we at home, we had a fight among, let's say brothers and sisters, among husband and wife, among, uh, uh, among, among our family members, uh, we used to have, and we still are having a very good system of, uh, of jirga. I'm not talking about that political side of that jirga, but that jirga is actually a way to resolve conflict in which the seniors, they sit together, they listen to both the parties and they propose a good solution. And at the end of that, that jirga, we have, we have harmony on both sides. Sometimes it is only because of the respect of vendors. Sometimes it is because of some misconception that is either on the one side or the other side, but sitting together, the word jega maybe is uh, is uh, propagated negatively but if you look into the essence of the process it is always what is needed for that non aggression for that mutual non aggression and uh, for a for a conflict free or a conflict resolving situation so listening to both the parties listening to both the sides and finding out a mutually beneficial way is what we can do in the second point, mutual non-aggression. Third point, the third principle of peaceful coexistence says mutual non-interference in internal affairs. If I am doing something in Pakistan, I am responsible. I am the one who is, uh, who is the beneficiary or who is doing it for my own country. No other country can, can interfere and tell me that this is wrong and this is right. No other country can come in and say that 
we'll have the we'll have the stations here and we'll fight with taliban we'll fight with afghanistan we'll fight with a third country if it is my internal problem it is if it is my internal affair i have to deal it uh, myself i don't need any inter external parties or external uh, bodies to interfere in my uh, internal issues fourth point is equality and cooperation for mutual benefit treat other persons treat other countries equally give them their mutual respect give them their uh, due respect and due uh, uh, due, due reason of existence equality and cooperation is something by which we can we can achieve the benefit together it is not me or it is not you it is not only uh, two different parties that can work together we together can achieve this goal the last point that is peaceful coexistence let peace prosper let me live with the peace so that you can also live with the peace this should be this should be of most importance if you will you will you will disturb my peace definitely it will affect yours also so peaceful coexistence living together in a way which is peaceful for me and peaceful for you is is of benefit this is what uh, i wanted to say about gsi now uh, one closing line before i i hand over the the mic to my organizers uh global development initiative global security initiative un 2030 agenda uh 17 sustainable development goals before that sdgs we had mdgs also millennium development goals then uh, um punjab governments this initiative number 1 number 2 number 3 kpk governments initiative laptop schemes all of these ways all of these small initiatives are taken in the society in the uh, in the regions over the globe for better it should not be, it should not be uh, you can say propagated in negative way one and secondly it they should be they should be followed in a way that they give maximum benefit to the people at large the last point is that you cannot make everyone happy you cannot make all of the countries happy with you but you have to choose wisely what is in your benefit what is in your in your prime benefit there is a very a very uh, well quoted um, uh, well quoted proverb that you cannot choose your neighbor but you can you can choose your friend so we cannot choose who to share boundaries with us we cannot choose india iran afghanistan china and other 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 boundary uh, sharing uh, countries we had a problem of uh, bangladesh in 1971 and that was because of the boundary conflict that was that was because of the problems among us similar kind of problems may not happen in future similar kind of problems should not be faced in future and the regional communities or the countries they should work in a better way for this we have to we have to have a mutually mutually uh, beneficial strategy mutually beneficial strategy when i'm saying it can be gdi it can be gsi or it can be any initiative that you talk about it can be a 2030 pakistan agenda also work together in a way that should make this country that should make pakistan a better place to live for us and for our next generation not in a way that we we should face and though we are we are facing for the last uh, few few years also in fact previous few years also that uh, we are we are facing a severe brain drain people who are uh, who are knowledgeable they are leaving from this country and they are leaving because they don't get the get good benefits it is not government's responsibility to clean the garbage in front of my home it is my responsibility to clean my 
uh, my the, the front of my house for a for a cleaner street if everybody in the street cleans his or her own gate maybe the street will look cleaner and when all the streets will look, look cleaner the community will look cleaner the country will look cleaner the city will look cleaner and ultimately everything will look will look better climate change is not the problem of to be dealt at country level climate level is the change is the problem that need to be dealt at individual level the security is something which which is not only the responsibility of the government also we also have to take care of our neighbors we also have to see some uh, some abnormal happenings in our society and we have to report it to the resp uh, responsible organization try to understand your own responsibilities also don't put all the things don't put all the responsibility on the government that my street is broken government is not doing it government is not fixing it that is what i i wanted to say ji thank you very much uh, i hope i have uh, tried to make uh, these these concepts the foundations of these concepts are a bit clear uh, and if i am supposed to answer any questions i'll be available till the end of the session thank you very much